I would like to introduce you to TripWeb, a young Australian psychonaut and video creator with very similar experiences when it comes to psychedelics and contacting the entities. Before we start, I wanted to let you know about something else I'm doing now. As instructed by Machine Elves, I'm building a network of like-minded individuals, and I decided to create a spiritual and psychedelic video hub on BitChute. If you don't know about it yet, BitChute is a fairly new video hosting platform. It's decentralized and based on peer-to-peer -peer technology, which means that it's immune to censorship. It's growing really fast and it looks like it might become a new and better YouTube. It already feels like what YouTube used to be years ago and I decided to transform the existing 434 BitChute account to a psychedelic channel with the biggest psychedelic and metaphysical YouTube creators. I already have TripWhip, Starpilot33 and Shaman Oaks on board and I will be reaching out to others now. Their videos will be uploaded there on a daily basis so that every day you can tune in and learn something new from them. We need a place like this for two reasons. One is that we need a channel where one can go to and learn everything necessary about psychedelics and spirituality and the second reason is that we don't trust YouTube anymore and we need an archive of everything that has been uploaded to YouTube should they decide to censor or remove us from their platform. I'll keep you updated and for now please subscribe to 434 BitChute and add a bookmark to your browser or create a link on your desktop or home screen to bitshoot.com 434. Always remember about the address b434.com as it will always get you there should anything happen on YouTube. This project will take some extra time for me, but I believe we need to do this to survive big tech censorship. It is another important reason for you to support financially 434. Unlike other free social media, I need to pay for hosting those videos on BitChute so that you can watch them for free. You are crucial not only to the existence of 434, but also to spreading the metaphysical awareness to others. To help me do this, you can join Patreon or Subscribestar, or you can donate money through PayPal, crypto or bank transfer. All links in the video description. Thank you for your help. I am really glad that you wanted to do this. I found your videos, I think, through someone. because Someone sent me, they said, oh, he's talking about you. I was like, oh, who's talking about me? And I checked your videos. I think it was, uh, which one was it about? Yeah, if it, if it mentioned you, it would have been the uh, Law of Attraction uh, video. What, the Machine Elves reveal how the Law of Attraction works. Something exactly. like that. So that was that was a really nice synchronicity. So um, let, let's talk That's about that. Right but yeah, first, uh, can you say something about yourself? Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, so my name's Jack. I run the uh, channel Trip Whip, uh, where basically uh, it started off talking about uh, psychedelics or my psychedelic use in general. But um, I made a video early on uh, when I opened up the channel talking about um, basically machine elves and like uh, channeling machine elves. And I actually made the video because I... Like I figured nobody except people who had seen or heard of Terence McKenna Machine Elves would watch it so because yeah. <laughs> it was pretty out there. So I didn't want too many people to see it. But um, I guess a lot of people were curious about, uh, you know, what Machine Elves are. So it got it – probably I think it's my most viewed video. And so after that, um, I realized people had kind of had a little bit of interest in these beings. And so I started talking about more, – more about – the entities I come to contact with on psychedelics as well. So that's more or less the channel I run. It's kind of uh, entity contact, spirituality in a sense, and psychedelics. Yeah. How long have you been in contact with uh, with machine elves? <laughs> Not particularly long. I mean, it's, the, the machine elves are a funny thing because the way it's worked for me is that uh, it, it revealed that the machine elves had always been with me um, all my life, but I only became aware of them um, when I took a, a high dose of LSD, which would have been uh, only a few years ago, maybe uh, three years ago, something like that. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah, because I, I, you're you've been in contact with this uh, these entities for a very long time, if I remember. No, it's uh, it's actually only around the same time, so August two thousand fifteen. That would make it more than four years. So, but for, for me, it's just mushrooms. So you you mentioned LSD. I know you also tried DMT. What 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 have you? What what substances do you use to get in contact with them? So uh, it was LSD that kind of uh, opened the door to these beings. Uh, but once the door was opened, it was basically any substance um, or any psychedelic, uh, even even weed. Like uh, I, I think once I stopped smoking weed often and just started having it rarely treating it like how I treat the other psychedelics with a little bit more respect and um, 
um, just you know just having it uh, a lot less frequently. Uh, then that the experiences on Wii became psychedelic and started taking me to the, the same place uh, where the machine owners reside. Um, and so that's really one of the reasons why I really connected with everything you say in your videos. I, I can relate it because the same happened to me. And it's something that people, um, a lot of negative feedback I get about yeah. this. I mentioned this in one of my first, first videos and today, today, to this day I get comments, people say, oh, what are you talking about? You cannot get in contact with <laughs> anything on weed. And I, I want to make a video about this because it's it's... I have a theory that your body is basically a filter and you switch off this filter by using different substances. And I mean, yeah. everybody, you know, people don't believe everybody can laugh, but it happened to me once when I was drunk. So I believe it basically, whatever you use, it switches off your, you know, this filtering mechanism and then your spirit or consciousness just leaves your body. Um, alcohol was just once. So yeah, it's yeah. not not something you can get. It wasn't anything. I, I just saw them. It wasn't like I get in contact. But weed for me, it's it's sometimes it's the same as as mushrooms. I basically get in contact with them. We talk. It's it's a normal psychedelic substance for me now, and it's really surprising. It's also a certain types of strain. It's it's not all types of weed. It's just um, there's a few strains to do that for me. But uh, what what's your experience with this? Similar. I think, like, I get the same sort of feedback as well. I released a video where I uh, filmed myself uh, basically smoking weed with the intention of meeting the machine owners. And I'd never done it at that point. And I was, I guess, extremely lucky because <laughs> I got it. Like, I captured it on film the first time meeting the machine owners on uh, weed. And um, uh, obviously, I posted the video, and, and uh, generally, the feedback was like, either it was like, what did you take? They thought I was joking when I said yeah. weed so that yeah, I didn't yeah. get demonetized. Um, and, or they were just saying I was, you know, full of BS. Um, but no, I, it's true. And uh, like a lot of people are talking about actually having, you know, profound spiritual experiences when they're sober. And I know it's possible. Like I've had, I work at a, uh, a float center. Um, and so, uh, you know, I use sensory deprivation tanks uh, quite often. And um, you can get very profound experiences in there, um, in the tank. And so it seems like, uh, for me, psychedelics have always been the most prof like powerful trigger to turn this filter off. Because I agree, I think we also we have this filter active uh, activated in our head, so that we only have to digest very, I guess you'd say, practical information. You know, information that pertains to keeping our body alive, um, and then all the other information is out, out there, and we have access to it. Um, but you know, it's just so overwhelming that we'd be we kind of become paralyzed in order to process it and which doesn't really um, serve our body too well. Uh, but when we take these psychedelics, it gives us this, this uh, time slot, you know, how long the drug lasts. This is how long you can enter the unfiltered reality. Um, and this is where the machine elves reside for some reason. Um, I, I have made a video where I talked about where I think this information comes from and, and, and how we're connected to all of this. Um, personally, I think it's something to do with uh, starlight um, that came that came forth in one of my um, trips. It was actually the one where I was talking about where I smoked the weed um, live. I, I think I watched it. I, I watched some of your videos, not all of them, um, yeah. but that's most of the things you say. I agree with. And I wanted to ask you, what is your theory? Because it seems you already have a theory on what those entities are. See, this is something I go back and forth with. Um, because I have a large audience of skeptics, I, 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 like to, I like to say that what they are is um, our interpretation of this unfiltered information. So, you know, the, the way we experience our sober reality uh, is through basically processing our environment in, in, as things or as people or as entities and individuals. Um, and this is just, this is how our brain has been programmed to, uh, survive throughout evolution. Um, but when we, and it's also a, a product of the ego, I imagine. Uh, and so when we, uh, take psychedelics and we start experiencing this unfiltered reality, 
um, where we're just getting a whole stream of information which we've never been in touch with before, our ego or our uh, language-based mind or our entity assigning brain or part of our brain is still active. And so it assigns entities uh, to this information. Um, but the, that's what I would always say um, when people ask me what I think these entities are. But I actually, I think that's me kind of copping out as to what I really think they are. Um, because these entities are more, how would I say, they feel more genuine than any other person I've ever met, which is a very yeah. hard, you know, it's a very hard thing to explain to people. But um, I don't think this is a delusion of the mind. And I, I, I don't, you know, if it is my brain assigning, you know, entities into this new information, there's a reason for it. Um, because, because there is so much order in these experiences, um, so much perfect order that allows these experiences to be translated to my sober self as to understand them. Mm. Um, that the fact, the fact that I am seeing entities is very important. Um, I think there is a type of intelligence in this, in, in this information. I, I genuinely think these beings are real. That's what I'm kind of getting to. And it's actually, it's hard for me to admit that because, you know, I, like a lot of people call me crazy for that. Yeah, no, of course, that's something that everyone has to go through who um, obviously talks about psychedelic messages. Um, I, I gave up a long time ago. I even made a video recently um, how to deal with quotation mark humans. And it's it's a it's an amazing relief when you just stop trying to convince people. That's why I always say, like, my channel 434 is basically for those who already know or who want to know more, I don't try to convince anyone. I don't try to explain anything. And it's because as soon as you connect with someone who has had the same experiences, they'll, they'll know what you're talking about. They'll be like, yes, of course it's real. It's, it's, it has yeah. to be real because many of us get messages that cannot be accessed through, I mean, from this reality. Like in my case, it was talking to dead family members who told me things that I had no chance of knowing otherwise. Um, but also, as you said, um, being there feels real. And mm. it sometimes feel more real than being in this reality. And it's, it's, this feels like simulation sometimes. And those entities we talk to, they have knowledge about things that my brain couldn't, like, like there's no way, I always yeah. say I'm not that smart. There's no way I could know those things. Um, yeah. They use words that I don't know. Yeah. I, had, I sometimes have to look them up. And I don't agree with them sometimes. That's the other thing because they... <laughs> They have ideas and concepts which are very universal, which are in strong opposition to what I believe in. And then I have to adjust my beliefs to what they say because they, they're always right. Everything they say right. makes sense and they're smarter than me. So, um, yeah, they, they very often they um, criticize me a lot. Like they say the things uh, that I believe in make no sense and they explain why. And very often I just change my beliefs because, you know, someone shows me how, how ridiculous I am. Um, sometimes they tell me that I'm too radical in my beliefs and there's a lot of stuff like um, the sexuality videos. That was a lot of negative feedback because they explained to me a lot about sex that I didn't know, uh, especially seeing it from the other, per like, you know, female perspective. Um, and there were things that I couldn't know and they helped me a lot in my life. So they, they have to be real. It's just... And also, there's too many people who experience the same thing. And also, yeah. institutions now. I think the um, Kingston College in London, I don't remember who, but they engage in... Uh, they created a separate department for mapping out the psychedelic world. So it's, it's not... It's not a product of imagination if someone's actually spending money on trying to create a map of, of this world. So mm, I believe mm. that, yeah, that, there's just too much proof um, that it's real. No, I, I agree. I, I mean, that's one of the arguments for this reality, that the sober reality that we're living in right now is that uh, people seem to be having, having a cons consistent experience. But then when uh, people who are taking psychedelics try and share the similarities to people who uh, haven't experienced it, it's constantly like, ah, well, you're just, you're just, you know, interpreting what they've experienced to match yours. Yeah. Uh, it's because that idea that the similarities are there is, is obviously extremely supportive of a, another, another reality. It's, um, um, for me, the, the funniest one is when people say that it's a coincidence and then you 
try to explain to them the mathematical odds of this being a coincidence. And it you goes into <laughs> such ridiculous numbers that it it just it is impossible like synchronicity. Um, right. I I don't know if you've um, you've seen the video that I made about one of the, the first one about synchronicity that happened to me with planes. Um, one of them crashing. I mean, I worked for a company and a plane of a company crashed on my birthday, and its flight number was four three four. So my birthday is um, that of August, which is three and eight. And just recently, mm. I found another flight that crashed, which flight number was four three four. And it um, there was something to do with um, it being delayed for thirty eight minutes. And the reason it crashed it was it was related to this thirty eight minutes again three and eight. Oh, wow. It's yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. And I want to yeah. make a video about matrix glitches. And a lot of it is related, again, to planes. And I don't know why. I don't understand it. But it's physically, I mean, it's mathematically and logically impossible for all of this to be a coincidence. Because people explain mm. synchronicities in a way that um, you're, you're looking for connections instead of seeing the connections. You basically mm. just create in your head. I always say, it's just impossible. There's too many things happening that... Um, would make it an, an illusion. What's your take on synchronicity? Well, it's funny. I've got a, an interpret like from you conveying to me your experience with synchronicity is I've got an interpretation of it based on what I believe synchronicities are. So for me, planes have always been the ultimate symbol of man can achieve whatever he wants um, because it's always that like whenever somebody's like you can't do that, it's like well once upon a time we thought we never could fly and now yeah. there are planes around. Like that's the first thing that seems to pop into people's brains. So planes for me take that the symbol of man can achieve what he wants. Synchronicities uh, were revealed to me to be a pattern that uh, is being shown to us. I, I like by machine. I was, it was one of my first videos I made was talking about how machines were revealing to us synchronicities uh, to make us aware of the connection between our. Uh, our belief systems, or I'm not sure if belief systems is the right word, but it's uh, our conscious mind and the way that different, uh, that the, our universe is being aligned. Um, because personally, I believe in the multiverse, and I think that uh, the machine elves are responsible for, somehow responsible for choosing which parallel universes are being placed together. And synchronicities are uh, patterns that symbolize this uh positioning of universes uh for instance it's like if you I, I made an example a very bad example in my in one of my videos but uh the example was like imagine you're driving down the freeway you turn on the radio you start listening to led zeppelin and you concentrate on that song by led zeppelin and it's your first time listening to it and then all of a sudden a, a car pulls in front of you uh, exactly. the license place first you know first uh, time led a, zeppelin or something yeah, like yeah. that or a and bumper so sticker yeah bumpers you know something like that and so it's like, well, if we live in a reality where, you know, these universes are consistent, it's like for, for that to have happened, this, this, this little coincidence is this whole guy's, this the whole person's, uh, this whole separate reality where this guy is a big fan of Led Zeppelin, all of a sudden, you know, puts his, this bumper sticker on his car and he's driving on the freeway at this exact time just to cause this coincidence for me. Um, and so... For me, that's what synchroni synchronicities represent. It was uh, was this revealing of the fact that parallel that that our reality um, is essentially uh, universes being placed together, different universes being placed together. So the fact that you're having uh, these synchronicities with planes uh, is is funny because it connects to the um, to the ultimate beautiful interpretation I got from this fact, which is that we can do anything we want because there is a universe out there where you have everything you want, um, not just in material goods, but in the way you feel. Um, and if you are thinking in the right ways, then you can literally attract that parallel universe into your reality. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. It's very interesting the way, because I listened to you explain it in your video about the law of attraction, which by the way, um, this was also a big synchronicity because we made those videos at the same time without knowing about yeah. this, right? We made <laughs> a lot of attraction videos about the same time, which is really yeah. crazy again. Um, but it's funny, this uh, this example you used with Led Zeppelin, 
because it actually happened to me. It, things like that happen to me all the time. And I feel, I, I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ego driven or anything, but I feel like I'm the first person who started asking people to talk about those synchronicities. I, at least I've never seen anyone do it on such a mass scale because I have, I talk to a lot of people and I have a huge folder of screenshots. People send me pictures and they tell me about their synchronicity stories and they're crazy. They're absolutely crazy. And I've never heard anyone do that. So I started doing it and I'm thinking about making a video about this because I actually have proved that synchronicity is not some kind of a coincidence, especially in regards to 434, because people talk to me every day saying, as soon as I started watching your videos, as soon as we started talking or whatever, I started seeing 434 and everyone says it's the same thing. They always say they start seeing uh, the clock at 4.34 p.m. or a.m. They start waking up at that time and they, they start seeing the number around them. And one of the craziest stories I've ever heard was someone got in uh, Uber and the Uber driver asked the guy out of the blue if they have ever heard of my videos of 434. And the guy said, of course, I actually go, I'm going now to my friend to do mushrooms. And he arrives at the house and the house number is 434. And oh, wow. this is crazy because things like that happen to me too. And there's more people who experience the same thing. So, um, I mean, there's, there's not much on synchronicity at the moment. That's why I'm trying to show people that this is what I, I was told actually by machine knows that this is a call to action this is for us yeah uh something that's supposed to make us realize that this is not just a physical reality that it's more than that there's a lot of yes. things that they explain i made a video about this um yeah. but let's talk maybe about the law of attraction because we make those videos you have a very good theory everything by the way everything you said you have you mentioned that we we're told different things, but when I listen to you, it turns out we're not. It's the same information, it's just different words and yeah. it's different concepts. So they didn't tell me about law of attraction in the same way as they talked to you about this. And they didn't give me like a specific, you know, it's not like the secret, the book. It, it wasn't like that. They basically showed me things uh, that made me realize that you, as you said, you believe in the multiverse theory where you can basically have anything you want by choosing the present moment's direction at least that's how i understand it but it's very similar to what i was shown it's basically that you create your reality by choosing your emotions so yeah. tell me your take on law of attraction uh yeah so i, I mean i when i said we had uh, we were told different things I, I i i didn't mean that we're told like contradicting information Mm -hmm. um, it was more like, you know, we were told it differently because I remember watching your video and learning from it. And so it wasn't like the, it wasn't the same information I'd received from, um, from the elves. Uh, but so this, this kind of plays into um, synchronicities uh, as well. I mean, a lot of the information from the machine elves um, pertains to this sort of stuff. Um, but from... From the machine, I guess what I, I got from it was the fact that um, I compared it to that the the slit experiment, um, where uh, they shot the pro uh, the electron through the double slit um, and measured where the uh, electron landed on on the screen, the fluorescent screen. That's the observer's um, paradox experiment. That's yeah. the exactly the observer's paradox, and so. Uh, I, I, when I was showing these visions from the machine elves, uh, this was on the weed, uh, on, on weed, um, I was seeing these flashing lights, which since I've come to definitely, definitely regard as representing the moments. Um, at this point when I was seeing it, I wasn't sure. And I felt like many people had seen these white lights, um, and, uh, I, I didn't, I, you know, I, I felt like I'd seen it many times as well during this trip. And when I sobered up, I was like, what the hell was I thinking? Like, I've never seen that before. But then um, uh, since then, I, I've, I've had a few trips and it keeps taking me back to this flashing white light, which to me represents the moment. Well, I was seeing these flashing lights being um, joined up together. And then I was seeing this force that I interpreted as time weaving these different moments together. Um, and then this was encapsulated inside this like weird, super advanced machine, 
which was projecting different emotions. And depending on which, wh what energy you were uh, holding, the emotion that you were receiving from this machine would be different. Um, and so what I interpreted it as was that wherever our perception is or whatever our focus is, this chooses which moments are being pieced together. Um, and so it's kind of like wherever, whichever, because you know about the, the slit experiment, yeah? Yes, of course. Yeah, yes, the, the very famous one. So it's like uh, whatever you are observing, that particular universe comes into fruition, even though all these other potential realities are laying dormant in this, um, uh, in this realm of potentiality. Um, and so that's, that's, that's how I interpreted this vision. I don't know if that made sense. It's it does. Scattered. And the reason why I like listening to people, to other people who have contact with machine labs is that um, I've noticed a long time ago that these messages become more complete. So each of us have a different part of a message I've noticed a long time ago. Like when we compare notes, whether mm -hmm. I do it with, uh, I don't know, Shaman Hawk, Star Pilot, we always find that we get... Um, the same messages, but different parts of the message. And what you've just said, I can complete that you pick those uh, different, because they're present moments. That's something you haven't mentioned. Well, sorry, you did mention that it's a present moment. I was told the same thing, that your present moment is the only thing that matters. And it's yep. the only thing that you actually have in life because, you yep. know, future doesn't exist yet. Past is already gone. And right. what they told me that you actually, the key to picking those uh, different realms of a present moment is actually your emotion. So your emotional state actually mm. is the driver behind which direction your life goes into. And they said, with your emotion, you will be able to not only attract that which you want, but you'll be able to steer your life in a given direction. And they always say, that's the reason why we always want you to... Um, stay in higher vibrational frequency. That's why we show you those synchronicities because they said it's a, yeah. it's a calling for you to keep the higher vibrational frequency state. And they said it's because in higher vibrational frequency, you allow yourself not only to go in the direction you want to go, but also it allows you to uh, consciously make choices and knowing that you're making choices. So it's not only uh, getting what you want, but it's also being aware of what you're doing. And it's exactly what you said. It's I didn't have that part of the message, and mm. it's very true because they you just, as soon as I heard you talking about the present moment, I was like, oh yeah, that's exactly the same what they told me. But they didn't talk about <laughs> law of attraction back then. They're talking actually about being happy. And it's funny right. you mentioned the um, sensory deprivation tanks because they actually showed me one of my visions that my. I don't know what it was, whether it was my body or my 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 consciousness was suspended in one of those tanks, as if you were in Matrix and you were closed in one of those tanks. And mm. they said the um, the synchronicity is actually us banging on the walls of this tank, uh, making sure that you're happy, that you're in high vibrational frequency, and that you actually enjoy life, mm. because that's how you get. That's how we can contact you. That's how you can choose uh, the the path. It's basically everything connects. Every time you say something, it's basically the same message I got, but from a different angle. So, yeah, it's it's amazing just how consistent these messages are. Like I, yeah. I met a person out in uh, the pub the other day, um, and I was just hanging out with my friend and his his like literally his rapper. Like there were there were friends who were rappers, and I, I just started talking to one of the guys, and uh, he asked me if I had any stories. I was like, ah. But man, the most interesting <laughs> stories I have, like, they relate to psychedelics. And he's like, oh, that's cool, man. Like, I love psychedelics. I was like, all right, well, have you heard of uh, Machine Elves before? And he's like, uh, yeah, man, I'm in, I'm in touch with them. I was like, really? I was Ooh. like, what? What? Are the yeah, I was like, what are these beings to you? And he's like, they are the beings that uh, organize the universe. And we started talking about the multiverse and, and all of the things he was in touch with was consistent with mine, other than the fact that he seemed to uh, also meet dark uh, machine elves, which at that point uh, had never had never happened to me, mm. um, um, which Quite is something you. I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the, 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 it's funny what you were saying about the synchronicities being us bumping against the wall. It, I totally agree. I think it's like a little reminder to us when we get lost in this game that we're in, and we start taking it all so seriously, and we start suffering because we're taking it so seriously. It's like, hey, look, here's a little thing that should be impossible for you to experience. 
but it's not because this is a simulation or this is a game or this is something like that. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's trying to wake us up to the truth of our reality, um, trying to get us in touch with our happier selves. The, 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 this whole, I, I made the video about the law of attraction, but then I made a follow-up video basically saying that I don't, the law of attraction to me is almost a misleading phrasing uh, because I think this outside world of ours is totally, in the most literal sense, a reflection of us. Um, and so, like, I, I came to this conclusion because when I took the high dose of LSD that made me see the machine else for the first time, um, I started seeing people around me stripping naked and holding up signs saying, congratulations, you've learned the secret. And like, things like that, which I was like, well, I shouldn't be seeing this. Like, this, <laughs> this is just bonkers. Um, no, no, I, I got the same thing. Uh, but for me, I, the, the contact that I have with them is more, uh, it's, um, it's more ordered. So I don't, I know that they use different visuals to convey the messages to people. I, they've told me this. But for me, they, they literally tell me, like, congratulations on getting on your path. That's what they said when I started 434. So again, it's the same message they told me, like, congratulations, you on your path now. And you discovered what, what your path is. And now you're doing it. And you were shown well, this in the same way, uh, but they used a visual instead. Well, uh, in this sense, it was like, because after this first LSD trip, it started becoming very introspective experiences. But this one was quite literally my neighbors, um, like in real life, stripping naked and holding signs. Like, because I thought I was looking at real life. And then when this happened, I was like, I, this can't be real sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but then I, you know, I came to the conclusion that my mind was so like, it was so in touch with this altered, this other reality that the reality I was in was changing uh, to, to, to match where my mind was at. And I think that's going on frequently. Wherever a headspace is at, our outside world is reflecting that. Um, and so we can try and convince ourselves sometimes, oh, I, like I'm, I'm really sad or I'm really happy, but your outside world reflects the, the true part of you. Any other people, the, the, the like I noticed this when I started um, pursuing what I really love. I started and telling people about it. People started sharing their doubts and saying, oh, look, just be careful. Don't, don't go after your dreams more or less because you could fail. And then when I stopped doing it and just became inactive, everyone was like, why are you inactive? Go pursue your dreams. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, Someone told you don't go after your dreams because you could fail? Not in those words, but uh, more or less, I, you know, I like um, basically trying to, it was actually, I mean, I don't want to say who it was, but um, I was telling this person what I wanted to do, what I really loved. And they were saying, um, there's no money in that. You should look, you're, you know, you should look at counseling or something like that. Cause oh, that that's seems a, to be that's something. That's a really bad good. friend. Don't listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but when I changed my perspective, when I became inactive and stopped, you know, pursuing the things I loved, then the words I was hearing from other people became um, totally the opposite of this. So yeah. what I think the outside world was voicing was my subconscious. Um, yeah. And, so, you know, it was like my subconscious doubt or my subconscious uh, desires. Um, and so th that's what I think this outside world is, is a reflection of us. And that's how this law of attraction kind of works. In my best trips, it's always this wonderful feeling of like, all you have to do is focus on how you feel. That's all that is really important is focus on what you love, focus on yeah, feeling exactly. good and true and pure and your outside world will fit that and match that. Stop thinking in the egoic way. Stop thinking about trying to achieve these material goods because you're actually matching a, a totally different frequency to what you want. Focus yeah, on exactly. yourself, focus on your emotions, and the outside world will reflect that. That seems to be a big message of the machine house as well. It's, the same, it's exactly the same message. And I made videos about simulation, and I made videos about emotions, and they told me exactly the same thing. They said, your emotions create your reality. Very early on, they showed me that um, they're not really too happy for me to talk about this. There, there's something, there's one message that I'll probably never reveal because it's, very profound they showed me something in this reality it wasn't a mushroom trip they actually showed me something here um about that that this reality is a simulation but i'm i'm not supposed to talk about this but they've told me like they've told me many times that this is a simulation and you create it with your emotions we're helping you create this reality with your higher self and your physical form in this reality is just an expression of 
what it is that you're supposed to achieve here and also it's a training ground simulation so it's basically just you going through life lessons and and they told me that i failed so far a lot of them and that i'm still trying so we we um we know it's a simulation, but at the same time, they always say, do not concentrate on this being a simulation because it defies its purpose. They say, if you're playing a video game, you're not supposed to you know, complain about the, the screen resolution, and you're not supposed to concentrate on the code that is behind the player's movement. You're supposed to enjoy it. You're supposed to complete it. And it's the same with our simulation. Like People always say, oh, if it's a simulation, that means we don't have free will and that kind of stuff. I'm like, it doesn't matter. It really... It, it, it's not important. What's important is for yeah. you to go through those lessons, even if they're simulated, and learn from them because the lessons are real. What you get out of this, even if it's a simulation, you get the perfect experience that is required for your higher self to experience. And I always, oh, I, I talked about this already, but I always see this episode of Rick and Morty um, where uh, Morty puts on this simulation helmet and he has a life of, a, of like 70 years and he sells carpets. I'm not sure if you've seen it. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's a, yeah. Yeah, it's, it shows exactly what simulation here is in the best possible way. It's Because it's very likely that it's the same for us. We're just energy yeah. beings who put on those helmets or go into isolation tanks and we experience this physical reality without having any memory of our true selves so that we can learn from it. It's like a training simulation. Uh, but we take it too serious or we're too lazy and we fail those tests. So I always yes. say, even if you know it's a simulation, because some of us do know, a lot of us get the same messages through different channels and people concentrate too much on this simulation and then they just become, um, you know, they, they said to me, Machinel said that the, the risk of you knowing what you know is that you uh, risk running into a situation where you realize that nothing's real and nothing makes sense because if it's a simulation, then what's what's the point of trying? And mm. they said, you need to remember that it doesn't matter. What you need to do is you need to go through life, enjoying it to the full and getting as much out of it as possible. It's funny, this is this nihilistic take on this fact is something that does come up a lot. This, well, if, if this is a simulation, why does anything matter? Why do I do anything? And yeah. it's like, because, well, if you're playing a video game, are you going to just like have your character sit on the couch, smoke weed all day and watch porn. It's like, that's a pretty boring experience of a video game. It's, it's like, you're going to go out there. Game, do... Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, you got to go out there and you got to do whatever you want. You're going to have the most fun ever. It's, that's, it's like, if this is a simulation, then it's all the more reason for us to have as much fun as we can. Exactly. Um, I always yeah. say, don't yes. treat like too yeah. seriously if it's a simulation because it doesn't really matter that much. That's why these experiences are like, Waking up in a um, in a lucid in a, well becoming lucid in a dream or something like that. All yeah, of a sudden, you know, in a dream, you're getting chased by monsters, um, and then you become lucid, and they just stop chasing you. Your fear and all these emotions that you were previously engaged with just totally subside, and then you you go around, you just you kiss the prettiest girl around you in your dream, and <laughs> you do things like that. And it's the risk you're running the risk of actually um, interfering with with the actual simulation because once you become aware of what's going on. And it, that, that's the problem that I have. Once I started seeing um, that it's not really, that this physical reality is not really real, that mm. became like, um, it started creating like disturbance in, in this simulation. I started seeing things that make no sense. And that started worrying me because I was thinking that my simulation is falling apart. And the thing I don't want to talk about is actually a proof of that. And it really scared me because... Uh, yeah, the, the thing that happened was really scary and it showed me that, yeah, it is a simulation, but at the same time, it shook my belief in everything and the machine elves were right. They always predict the future, by the way. They always say something that becomes reality and they said, be very careful with what you wish for and what you do because if you concentrate too much on this, you can actually, they, they actually said not to go behind the curtain. They said, um, you, I've discovered something, how this reality works and they said, now that you know this, you're in a very, very difficult situation because you can actually stop believing in this reality and you stop respecting it, and it happened. I went through a few days where 
I, I didn't know what to do with this, what I was, what I found out. And I decided I'm going to stop. I'm not going to concentrate. I'm going to go on with my life and do everything that I need to do here because it's, it's, it's pointless. You're not supposed to concentrate on what you know because then it distracts you from completing your tasks here. And I believe that we have tasks. We have a purpose that we decide mm -hmm. to, um, to have before we come here. Our higher self does it. And I was actually shown that, that, that that's how life, life happens, how it works. I always mention the um, Adjustment Bureau, the movie. I'm not sure. Yes. Oh, I love yeah, it. Totally. It exactly yeah. explains how life works. It's not about, you know, machine totally. else, but it, it shows exactly how it works. It's a funny yeah. Hollywood movie, but I really, really like it. I also wanted to ask you, do you have any examples of um, machine elves interacting with you in this reality, not in psychedelic states? Oh, I see. Um, it's hard to say because um, the way machine elves seem to communicate with me um, when I'm not on psychedelics, when I'm not directly seeing them, um, like not having a sensory experience of them is by like um, talk, communicating through the environment. It's like, you know, you'll be thinking thoughts and then all of a sudden the radio will kind of act in a, as a synchronicity and it'll kind of reply to exactly what you're thinking or like a question you had. Um, and then some, you'll meet somebody um, who, who you just kind of were thinking about and, and they will be that perfect answer. But not really. I guess not really other, uh, more than that. Um, what about yourself? Well, that's one of the things that I, that, that's one thing that happened to me that I cannot talk about. It was scary because I could write a book about this. Um, the other thing was that I actually meditated once and the whole world became energy. And that was mm. so scary because it was before my psychedelic experiences was about 10 years ago and I couldn't switch it off. It lasted for a minute and it was at night in my room and my room became energy. It was no longer physical walls and items. It was just energy like in Matrix. And I, yeah. I, I was so petrified because I thought that I started panicking because I thought I cannot switch it off and then I'm, I'm gone or something happened to me. It obviously it went away after a while, but um, I started getting really scary of meditating after that. I, I didn't want to meditate anymore. And I started recently doing it again because it was such a... It, I really started panicking because it was the first time that I actually didn't have grasp on reality and something happened that I didn't understand. So that was that. Um, that was when I started <laughs> thinking about what you're, te you're teasing me so much with this, this thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's because you know why? Because if I talk about this and I tell people, people will start, start doing the same thing. I, you can hack this reality. That's the problem. There are things you can do to, there are little hacks, that you can use to change this reality and you know things like magic and and there are dark entities there's a whole world of things that people shouldn't know about there's i mean they should know about this but yeah it's it's if it goes in the wrong hands um that's that's scary that there are things that people shouldn't know about and also like you you said you never had any experience with negative like dark entities i did and this is something that can really be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. That's why I always say to people, be very careful how much you take of, of any, any substance. Because yeah. once, you, once one of those entities drags you into their dimension or they, they take over your reality, then you could be in hell. And it happened to me once. It happened to me on a heroic dose of mushrooms. And I was uh, stuck in two hours um, well, I was stuck in one minute. I was, I think it was 11 past 6 PM. I couldn't get out of this. It was a, um, a problem with time continuum. I know that we all get this sense of time distortion, but it wasn't that I was stuck in that minute for something that felt like days. And yeah. I was in myself when I was stuck there, I was stuck in hell for that yeah. amount of time. And it's, it's funny because they made the movie inception which actually talks about this. And I believe whoever made it must have had some psychedelic experiences. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's something that people should be careful with. Um, it's important to look for those signs and those, I also want to make a video about this. Uh, people shouldn't ignore those signs. They get like synchronicities, that kind of stuff. Like 
you, you, you mentioned this, this car situation. You see Led Zeppelin. For me, it was very similar because I was in a car with someone and I said, uh, they were saying, like, why you never listen to radio? I said, they never play what I want to hear. Like, why, does, why doesn't they play Nirvana? I mean, all, all the bands, Nirvana again. And I turn on the radio <laughs> and there's, I don't know, I think it was Polly or something like that. Um, or yeah. it smells like Teen Spirit. What are the odds of this actually, you know, not only did I never hear, I mean, hadn't had had, had the experience of, of hearing Nirvana on, on the radio because they hardly ever play it now. But also, um, out of all the, you know, bands that they, they, yeah. they suddenly, it, it, that, that given moment and it's Nirvana on the radio and it happens to me all the time. So uh, I believe those are, uh, well, I don't believe, I was told that they basically tell us to um, to wake up, they tell us to change the frequency. Like very often yeah. I noticed yeah. with uh, synchronicities, 434 appears uh, because they want to warn me about something. And this is my latest discovery. It's been only a few months that I noticed that. Like one of the things that I like about psychedelics is that this knowledge grows. I have a book, I call it a magic book of, mach of uh, machine elves because every time I get a new message from machine elves, it completes the rest of the message that's already in this book. This book has 50 pages now, and it's basically just all the information. All the 434 videos are based on that book. But every time I trip and I get new messages, it completes the rest of the messages that I was being given in the last four years. So it grows, but it becomes bigger and it makes more sense. When I get a particular message, I go back to the book, I see that it changes the older messages. And it's really interesting the way it works because also that's also the proof that everything they tell us is real, is, is true and also that they're real because there's nothing contradictive in, in those messages. Like there's yeah. no message you get after three years that contradicts the previous one three years ago. It always yeah. completes it. Um, so that's also so how I believe they interact with our reality. But the thing that what I want to say is what I, what I noticed recently is that very often I'll see synchronicity numbers like 434 or recently for me it's 1111 um, mm, and same. I'll go oh something's gonna happen and I notice recently it's all about frequency like they tell me you need to watch your frequency your vibrational frequency because very often they show me a number and then I get it in a negative situation with someone and uh, like an argument or, or you know someone cuts you off when you're driving and then you get angry and it has uh, consequences your anger then intensifies because you meet somebody else and when I see this number I'm like oh I gotta be careful something's gonna happen so I either become more positive or I try to raise my frequency and then when when I get into this conflict situation I'm like I already have the shield on I already know what to watch for and that's how I think they interact with a reality at least that's what they told me and what they showed me right I mean so, like, I, I can't personally relate to um, having a similar thing happen with number synchronicities. I get 11 11 um, a lot. Like, um, um, I, like honestly, I, I, when it happens, there is such a little reaction. <laughs> like, such a little reaction. It's kind of like, ah, there's the sunrise for the day. Like, yeah. I love seeing 11 love seeing 11, 11, but it's just it's an, ex it's, uh, an expected sight. Um, so I don't, I don't think if things do happen after seeing eleven eleven, I don't, I don't really notice them. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's. I think they are trying to convey something with the synchronicities, and as you're saying, I think they're trying to wake us up to this this consistent truth. Because just like you, the the messages that I've directly received from the machine elves uh, never contradict each other. They're, it's ever growing, but it never contradicts itself. I I, I have interpretations of these messages which sometimes uh, may contradict themselves. But the, the pure, true message from machine elves um, is just, it, it's so wonderfully consistent. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's what these uh, dark entities are trying to steer us away from. Because I never actually called them um, dark machine elves before, but I have had contact with one dark entity before. Um, and it tried to trap me with what I believe was delusion. Um, and so I was having a uh, deep trip. I was meditating in, in, in my dark room on, um, on a high dose of a couple of substances. And, um, and basically, I came to contact with this. Well, I, I just appeared in this red room. And this voice, which I thought was my own, my own thought, said to me, do you want to see black magic? 
And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, I don't know what black magic is. Just show me. <laughs> and um, next thing I see this incredibly dark, powerful looking black square just appear before my vision. And the voice then continued. And it was like, now that you've seen this black magic, you can never go to heaven. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, like, what have I done? And then uh, I quickly just fell back and was like, no, I know what's going on here. You are a dark entity trying to trick me into having a bad trip. Exactly. And as soon as, as soon as I came to that conclusion, I saw this entity manifest itself uh, before me, this very dark black look and smoke. And it just kept trying to launch itself into me, trying to fill me with fear. And I just kept laughing at it. Like I, I was just, uh, I was uh, you're basically laughing at it and calling it weak. And then it just went away. Um, and then it did threaten me. Then it said to me that basically I had to prepare because I was going to have a, uh, um, a, bad, a, a trip that would be as powerfully negative as my synthetic weed trips from back in the day. And after he said that, I had to stop meditating. And I was like, okay, you win. <laughs> <I'll chill." laughs> but um, uh, up until that point, I was able to fall back because I, for me, anything that inflicts fear has always been related to delusion. Um, because fear is like a prediction of something to come. You know, if you're focusing on what is real right now, there is no fear present. There's nothing to be exactly. afraid of. Exactly. You um, had the same messages, yeah. Yes. It, so it's always anticipation of something. It's that classic saying, uh, false evidence appearing real. Exactly. exactly yeah. what fear is, yeah. So I have a, I have a problem with, with this whole um, psychedelic revelations that, that we're discovering, these, these messages we're getting. I, on one hand, it's completely changed my life, made me a better person. At the same time, it opened the doors to a lot of things that I don't think an average person, person should know about. Um, and I'm not sure if you've seen the movie Doctor Strange. Um, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it's about those, you know, the group of people that use magic spells and that kind of stuff. I recently found out that I don't know if you're into politics, into into you know the global globalist and all those what people call conspiracy theories. They may need truths. Uh, you know, conspiracy theories is just a term they use to hide the truth. But I heard that those in power they actually use black magic. They actually know how to get energy from those dark dimensions. And I have a theory that the reason why YouTube started censoring us recently is because people became too knowledgeable and too powerful in, in, in this. And I get contacted by a lot of people who do, who do magic and they say, if you, want, if you want me to, I can show you what it's about, I can tell you that it's real. And I always say, no, I don't want to. Because if the, if, yeah. if the people in power use it and if they actually draw the energy, the dark energy to their benefit, then it's definitely something I don't want to be a part of. And it scares me. Right. Um, yeah. It's, it's like, I think it's all related to this, this concept of delusion. Cause it's like the reason why we turn to these things like black magic or dark magic is because we want to receive these material gains in this outside world. Because every, like there's no need for dark magic when you realize the truth, which is that you have everything you need. It's within you. You know, you don't need dark magic to achieve happiness. But exactly. a, a lot of people have fooled themselves and they have given this reality some seri serious genuinity or something like that where they just, they think they need to have something in order to have the happiness they crave. And so they're literally willing to um, go against their own morals um, and, 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 you know, turn to things like dark magic or whichever it is to achieve these material goods. But this is the voice of delusion. Mm. This is the voice where it's like, well, okay, if you can, because if you can get someone to go against their morals um, or their own morality, then that person is going to inflict a, a negative karma on themselves um, because then they're like, well, they subconsciously know they've done something wrong. And so just because it's probably because we've been raised with positive, negative, negative reinforcement. So whenever yeah. we do something wrong, we're punished. So it's like, well, now that I've done something wrong, I have to punish myself. So it doesn't even like, even if you were able to get the thing that you want, you will probably even be less happy. This is the, the, and this will be your negative karma. Cause you know, you didn't deserve this thing. You know, I mean, you, you only get a good night's sleep after a hard day's work because you feel like you've earned that sleep. So if you're turning to things like dark magic, like it just defeats the whole point. Like you, you'll never achieve that happiness that you turn to the dark magic for. So this is all 
inside the mind of the delusion. This is what it wants from us. It wants us to sell our soul. It doesn't want us to achieve the happiness that we can all achieve. Um, and yeah. it could be related to the YouTube monetization because um, I think I heard that they were monitoring, that they were censoring us because I've been demonetized now. My whole channel has been demonetized because, um, uh, well, I, I assume it's because I talk about drugs and a lot of advertisers on YouTube uh, probably don't want to have their content sponsored on a channel that's talking about hardcore psychedelics. And so YouTube's started demonetar de demonetizing or has demonetized me. But at the same time, it's kind of like, well, it deprives this message as well, this, this beautiful message that is, is beneath the surface of psychedelic use. And it's done so for the sake of money. And it's like, well, money is, again, part of this material delusion. I'm sure it has its purpose. And, you know, this is kind of like a, uh, maybe a paranoid way of thinking because because um, uh, it all serves a good purpose if you want it to, I guess. But it is frustrating. Like, it is frustrating to have a whole channel demonetized. <laughs> well, I never really applied for monetization with 434 because I, I don't want to have anything to do with YouTube. If I could go somewhere else, I would. Uh, YouTube is yeah. still the biggest platform. Um, BitChute is slowly becoming a, a thing at the moment, so it's, it's getting bigger. I hope at some point we'll all migrate to... You know, because it's not centralized, it's it's P2P, and it's uh, it's something that I hope will become the future, because I really, I, I don't like YouTube, I don't like uh, what they're doing. But, you see, I never monetized uh, the channel, so I wasn't demonetized, but for me, uh, they started censoring me in April, and my... my uh, oh, censoring you? How so? It's um, my channel started getting a lot of subscribers. I think the highest I ever got was 1,200 people a day. So if um, if it wasn't for YouTube censoring me, I would be probably in six digits when it comes to subscribers. Now I used to get something like half a thousand subscribers a day, and on I think second uh, of April they changed the algorithms and. Um, I went down to like like 20 to 50 people a day, um, yeah. occasionally up to 100. Now they changed again after this COPPA thing, they've changed it again, and now I'm getting again about 100 subscribers a day. Um, it's, it's weird because it looks like I was put in the same category as the rest of the political stuff. I mean, it's all about the elections, 2020 elections. So... I think they're trying to silence um, everybody who's, who's, you know, they just want to make sure that um, people vote a certain way. But somehow I was included in that, and I don't know why, but they've just yeah. changed it again. So I think it's either, I don't want to be paranoid, maybe they're just censoring everybody. I've noticed that they gave a lot of attention, like when you look for machine elves, you used to, you would get my channel back in the days. Now yeah. you get Comedy Central, you get Vice because they all started talking about like trips yeah. and DMT ayahuasca. Yeah. It's basically yeah. just money. They try to give the voice to mainstream media, which is funny because Vice is it's about to go bankrupt. I think they've already s downsized. I, I don't know what YouTube's doing. This woman, this CEO, I think she either has an agenda that we don't understand or she's just delusional. I think it's just. It's just crazy what she's doing because she's driving everyone away from YouTube. And I cannot wait mm. to see the new YouTube Rewind because people hate YouTube. The creators hate YouTube at the moment. And it's such a weird situation mm. that we're on this platform that we don't agree with and we don't like. And um, they use racism. Um, they, they use like weird political stuff in, in their messages. And no one wants that. Like no one, It's the same with Hollywood. They all do the same thing. Um, I just want to, I, I think I, I, uh, I started talking about something else that I want to talk about. I, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention was my idea of evil that I, th this concept that I was given from machine elves when they said that there is no real evil. It's just our human interpretation of it. And I found myself recently having a problem with this because I made this video called evil explained where I explained that evil is just human interpretation of something that's happening that we don't understand. But at the same time, once I started feeling like someone wants this dark entity to be introduced into the world, because if you if you follow like politics and, and what those globalist families are doing, you'll find out that they're basically trying to do the opposite of what is considered good in this reality. 
and it feels like they're trying to do something evil. And it's very difficult for me to know about machine elves saying that it's just a human concept, at the same time seeing all of this stuff happening in the world that is counterproductive, that is actually not good for our development. And I understand it's a simulation, I understand it's a training we're undergoing, but at the same time, I'm starting to think maybe in our human reality there is such a thing as as evil. It's a very complex concept, and people always complain about this. People don't like me talking about this in terms of just a human experience because I feel that's what it is. But at the same time, yeah. you you cannot like I always say I always give this example. If you find out one day that this here is hell. For example, you being sent here as a punishment because life can be very difficult sometimes. And you're supposed to be tortured here by your feelings, your emotions, by your failures in life, and you just feel bad. And once you leave this reality, you realize that it's just bliss, nirvana, and everything's amazing. And then you compare those experiences and you say, oh my God, that was a horrible, that was like a prison sentence. I spent eight years in prison. That's what being on earth is. And then I'm saying, look at the murderers, people who free you from this prison, prison, they kill you, and you go back to your reality where you're happy. Look how much this would change the concept of evil only if we knew that right. that's how it works. This just that it's a theory, it's you know, it's an abstract example. No, I, I mean I think what we're doing like truth and evil, these are concepts that we are channeling from somewhere in the cosmos, and then we are assigning them. To or labeling them in you know, outside reality, it's kind of you know. But like, I don't th like. I think evil and, and good, they're real. But what represents evil and what represents good can change, and it does change throughout time. Um, so it's like once upon a time, you know, um, homosexuality was evil. Um, fast forward, and and it's like, well, like there, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that, but. You know, once upon a time, that is it represented evil for us. Um, evil is a thing. Like we, 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 we can conceptualize evil. We can understand evil. We can, we can feel evilness. Like it's, it's something that seems to be out there in the cosmos. Um, but we are assigning it things like to murderers. But it's like murderers themselves aren't evil. Um, and, and, and that's, that's, I mean, that's where I go with it. It's like, I think evil and good, they're real, but the, the things that we assign them to are, are malleable and can change. It's again, the same thing. Like you mentioned that, um, murderers are not evil themselves. Um, cause I always, when I hear about this, um, like I hear about someone who, who committed crime, I was thinking this used to be a child. And this used to be an innocent human being that was basically put in the wrong type of, well, not wrong, but the negative environment that was reinforced in their negative beliefs, and they're just suffering. Uh, one of the things the machine has told me is aggression is, uh, is cry for help. They said, you're aggressive because you're, you're so, you're yeah. hurt, you're, you're hurting so much that you, yeah. you, you start acting out on it, you're starting acting on it. And again, it's a concept that you get a lot of criticism for once you start talking about this, but that's what it is. Humans are not evil. We're not yeah. born evil. We're not born murderers. We're born to be loving entities. And then somewhere along the way, something happens that breaks you. It just it just corrupts you. And then you become angry. And this anger leads you to... to I, I believe evil is just a misunderstanding. You, you don't understand what life's about because... There's no payoff from evil. And even if there is, like, I don't know, monetary gain or whatever, it's short term. And it usually creates more problems than, than positive yeah, yeah. things. In it would life. just breed itself. Exactly. It doesn't pay off. If you were to come here as an alien and they would tell you you want to be evil, or you want to be good, you look at the benefits, you look at the chart, left and right column, and you go, oh, this column makes more sense. I'll do good. Because that's what it is. You get more benefits from good. You actually accomplish more in life by being loving and and you know so i believe it's just um i still believe evil is a concept but i'm starting to see myself having a problem with this like i'm starting to label things more as evil these days and especially when i hear about those who try to introduce dark forces into our reality this is i'm not right. sure if you follow this because there's this theory that those in power they want to introduce 
uh, Satan into. They, they actually want to do what Ghostbusters Two was about, Zul. Uh, it's apparently that's what they're trying to do. Because if you know, if you think about those entities being real, machine elves being real, then dark entities are also real. And I, I encountered them. I actually killed one of them. What I considered to be an evil entity, and then I was shown that there's no such thing as an evil entity. I was punished for that. I made a video. Right. About it. But yeah, I, I watched that one. Yeah, so it it actually yeah. again reinforces this concept of, of machine elves that evil is just human concept and but at the same time being a human and seeing what's happening in the world at the moment and just they openly talk about uh, putting Satan in power and and I used to laugh at this I used to think that these theories are just fairy tales they're crazy but. Now, when I listen to this, I'm thinking, hold on, I know about positive entities, I know them, I contact them. What about those who decided to make a deal with evil entities? Um, mm. Maybe there is such a thing, maybe it's true that they want to actually, they want evil to rule the world because they have a weird, skewed idea of, of life. And that's where, where I have a problem with this. So, with Well, I, I think where energy... Attention goes, energy flows, and it's like if you're not, if if you see evil in the world, if you're able to do something about it, it's worth concentrating on because it's an aspect of yourself that you can heal. That's what I believe. But um, I think a lot of people do focus on the evils in the outside world when there isn't anything that can be done about it. Um, and this, I mean, this isn't something that. Um, I would say avoid or don't avoid, but it's something to be careful with, I think, because you can get lost in it. And yeah. you know what my belief is. So it's like, well, I think whatever our belief in reality is, that is what reality is. The only thing that's real is this moment right now and everything yeah. else is just imagined concepts. And so um, however we interpret these things, they tend to be that for us. Um, mm. So, per I mean, personally, I, I have, I'm not really uh too involved with this sort of info i'm not really aware of of this stuff that's going on um and maybe if i mean i know my brother is and maybe if i was to take like a mission of spiritual warfare <laughs> i would become aware of it but um i don't feel that's my path at the moment and so um yeah i i, I i'm not really aware of, of these things going on mm -hmm. around us it's um it's good not to pay attention to it, but sooner or later it will catch up with you. It will basically you you will, because I, I tried ignoring it, but at some point I realized that yes. I'm, I'm, once they starting you know when I started realizing that they're censoring psychedelic messages. Once I actually started being affected by this, I started seeing like once you start getting older and you see what's going on in politics and who's behind all of this, you start realizing that it affects you on so many levels. It affects your, yes, you know, yes. your well-being, everything. So they always say that if you're not interested in politics, at some point the politics will start getting interested in you. <laughs> and I believe that's what's happening because you can ignore it only for so long until actually you realize that you are a victim of this whole thing. And then you will start, you know, it starts from your... Um, you basically voting in, in 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 getting people in power who are not trying to harm you, who are actually beneficial to your to your you know your little community, and then it goes higher to your country, and then at some point you realize that you have to fight for um, for good because you always need to protect your freedoms and evil yes. people want to take away your freedom. It's not something that yes. you're given. It's not, you know, it's by the way, being free is a new thing. It's something that we didn't have. Um, yeah. Only It's only been a few decades that we've been free before that you were so many, there were so many forms of slavery, you know, financial slavery. It's been only a few decades that we've been really free. And again, I can see that it's they trying to take it away from us. They're starting from um, censoring free speech. That's a thing now. Um, they're trying to silence people who talk about psychedelics. I'm, I'm glad that this movement is growing and that Canada, I think, is now about to legalize psychedelics nationwide. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. I think they've just done it for weed in, in the United States. So I see this awakening, but at the same time, the more we awaken and the more we push for being free and being good, the more the, the, the evil 
tries to take over our lives and it becomes this struggle. And I think we're getting to a point where this will become an open conflict. Sooner or later, there will be a war between the forces of good and evil. And I think whether you like it or not, you will need to pick a side. No, I agree. I think, I mean, as I said, I think the outside world is a reflection of us. And so if you're ignoring problems that come into your experience, you're ignoring a problem with yourself. And that always catches up with you. You know, yeah. we know we know this is the case when you run away from your problems. Of course, they catch up with you, and they keep reoccurring over and over and over again until it is dealt with. Um, and to deal with it, you tend to have to get dirty. You have to get gritty, and and you have to fight it. You have to be, uh, be, become amongst it to overcome it. In fact, that's what I think a big part of our whole spiritual mission is. The reason why we are light beings that are absorbed in this reality is that it's a form of cleansing it, we've had to forget our true nature in yeah. order to become immersed with the darkness so that we can in fact transmute some of this darkness back into light it's just a game of whether or not you can remember the light or get lost in the darkness um so yeah. no I, I mean i i agree we we there are things out there that we have to face and unfortunately you know it is something that i've been affected by as well my channel is also um, been censored quite heavily. I've I noticed when my channel began, and they didn't know the content of my videos. My videos grew way faster. I mean, my first three videos were the, the fastest growing videos I had by far. Um, and then when they realised what it was I was producing, the views just dropped like that, yeah. like nothing else, you know. Um, and so. It's obvious that there's a big censorship going on. At the same time, I'm grateful for the existence of YouTube, of course, because none of it would be possible without it. But it's just a shame. It, 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 is, it is. It is. Yeah, it is. Just I'm, a shame. I'm thinking one day everything becomes legal, and I'm, I'm I'm thinking like going back to the CEO of YouTube and say, look, look how much money you've wasted, even from a financial perspective, <laughs> because all of us are starting to turn against you to be looking for um, alternatives and. I don't think you can repair the damage because I really don't like YouTube now. It's a it's a it's a platform that's hostile to us. So we we're, we're not really happy about what they're doing. Um, one more thing you just said about evil being here so that we can experience good. And I always remember this one thing someone told me that there's no music without silence. And this was the concept that I really and I was like, "What? What do you mean?" Like, like, and then I started thinking, like, "Yes, music exists as a combination of tones and silence between them. That's how you create notes. That's how you, you know, it's it's. There's no music without silence. It's true. And I think it's the same with the evil and um, good concept. It's there's no good without evil because if there's no evil, then you don't know what the difference is between these two. And Machine House actually showed me the same thing. They said. Um, you're experiencing all those moments of uh, struggle and hardship because then you appreciate more what good actually what 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 good happens in your life, and it's like a compass. So bad things happen to put you on the right path and make you appreciate more of the stuff that's actually going on in your life. Um, we we've been talking for almost 70 minutes. Is there anything else you want? Because we actually we we went through a lot of things with that was on our list. We talk yes. more, <laughs> but there's a few more stuff I would like to talk to you about, but I don't want to make it too long. Anything else you would like to talk about now? No, I mean, I think the conversation has been flowing pretty naturally. Um, yeah. <laughs> what I was most curious about was, um, I, well, what I wanted to come to you with was talking about the dark entities because, um, as I said, I haven't personally experienced uh, dark machine elves other than that recent time when I ha came across those sexual machine elves they weren't dark but they very much reminded me of the sirens from um, Greek mythology where they just wanted me to stay with them and just like have sexual experiences oh, yeah. for some reason I said no now I'm like why the hell did I say no <laughs> yeah. but I one of those entities I met um, she actually introduced herself as a goddess of the sexual world but it was a feminine sexual world so apparently we have, I always say that we every aspect of our reality has a, has a counterpart in the machine elf world. And there's a god of weed, there's a god of sexuality in, in different forms. So I met this goddess of sex, but I said yes. She wanted to have sex with me, I said yes. It was the most incredible sexual experience of my life. You know, the, the biggest sexual organ is your brain, actually. It's, it's physical, you generate those feelings in your brain. 
but it's not really physical. It's it's more about what goes on in your head and your feelings and everything like that. So she generated all of this for me so that she could teach me about um, female sexuality. Not only was it like one of the most educational moments of my life when it comes to sex, it changed a lot for me. But at the same time, it was the most amazing sexual experience of my life. Uh, it was something you cannot describe, you cannot compare it. I don't know what she did to me, but she engaged all my senses. And it wasn't even physical in any way. It was just her creating a sexual sensation in my head. It was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. And it was a funny thing because I talked I talk about this in my video, but she looked like a giant spider made of vaginas. It was so... <laughs> it was really scary. She, like this, this, I call her she. She was a goddess. She was so scary and was like no 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 don't worry i'll show you and then she started having sex and i was like oh my god this is crazy it had nothing to do with what it looks like it's just absolutely amazing so next time if you meet them definitely say yes because it's uh well i, I see it's funny the vibe was different because I, I i before i saw these entities this time oh, well these machine elves um i had a sober uh experience where i was meditating and then I felt some sexual pleasure going on. And it was so funny, like the way my mind worked when I was in this deep state, I was like, okay. I was like, cause I couldn't see anything. I could just feel the sexual pleasure. And I was like, okay, I'm just imagining an uh, anti-gay uh, uh, fabric going over my body right now. <laughs> anti-gay? So, yeah, <laughs> cause I, like, it was so, I was like, for some reason, just uh, not comfortable with um that's like like the idea of it being a masculine energy that was having sex with me oh yeah 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 i understand yeah yeah, yeah 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 so um so then i could give myself to it but then as i gave myself to it i remember i woke in and i saw these like very like spongy sharp looking entities that seemed to like be sucking my energy away um not like sucking it away like like a vampire but just just seemed to be like i don't know i don't know feeding off my energy or something like that um and these machine elves had that very same vibe um and it wasn't it just didn't have that like totally positive essence to it which um i don't know it just felt like some um some weird dark sexual energy uh, yeah which I've never come back i know what it is i uh, on my heroic trip i had the same thing part of this nightmare was meeting the same entities because they try to mimic the behavior of good entities and uh, um you will recognize them by the sense of something being off. Like you realize that, oh, it looks like a good entity, but something's not right. And if you don't listen to your intuition, uh, you will soon learn that they pretend to be good entities and they actually, they use like those good elements of contact. In, in this case, it's sexuality. They did the same thing to me. Me being naive and, you know, just, oh, so again, a sexual experience, I let them... I followed them and they took me to their dark dimension and they raped me. And that was, yeah, right. and yeah, yeah. that was such a scary experience because um, it's the being, that they're being raped is not in a physical sense, obviously, but in a, they rape your, your energy for, and this is such a weird experience because it's really painful. Like everything hurts, like it's really bad. And they, at the same time, while they rape you, they um, take away your energy and they they harm you and it's just it's a nightmare it was an ordeal it it lasted for a long time and i i think i escaped or no i think they just used me and they just left me there and wow. i had to go back to this normal dimension that that was a really really bad experience so in the same way as you can have a very positive and beautiful sexual experience uh, with those entities if you encounter a trickster like a like a bad entity a negative entity they can do mm -hmm something sexually to you in a very negative way. So I always say for people to be careful what they do, but uh, you will sense that if you're in touch with your like inner intuition, everything that goes on when you listen to your intuition, you will see that something's not right. You will feel that something's off and you will stay away from these. I've, now I've learned to recognize them and also learned to defend myself. I, I was told that I'm actually very powerful. It's just that I have to understand my powers. And now that right. I know how to do this, I always, I, I laugh at them now. So um, yes, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm quite, I would say, immune to those dark entities. But it's also important to stay in this um, state of sanity. That's why I made a video about your insanity, because it's very important for you to be in control. And when you take too much, whatever LSD or mushrooms, 
you lose control of your body because your body is mm. so busy with um, the substance that it doesn't really give you much energy to control your mind. And that's why it's so easy to get into those um, dark dimensions because they can easily take advantage of you because you don't control yourself anymore. That's why I always say, make sure you always take small doses so that you don't take too much and then you don't lose control. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Again, again, it's the same, the same thing. Everything you talk about, I've, I've experienced myself. So mm. I'm, I'm glad there's so many of us because I get these messages all yeah. the time. People contact yeah, it's me. Crazy. You know, and they say, oh, the reason I watch those channels like, like yours, mine, Shaman Oaks, they go, it's because I finally understand what was going on and I, I know that I'm not crazy. Yeah. So I think it's important that we continue making those videos and that we basically help people by understanding themselves. So I'm, I'm happy that you do this because I really enjoy listening to you. You, you have a very mature and very logical way of talking about stuff. And also I find a lot of the same information that I get in my trips. So that's really, really good. And I hope you'll continue and I hope you'll not get discouraged from this YouTube censorship. I think it will change soon because um, they, they have to change something or they'll go bankrupt. There's no way they can keep doing this because they're trying to push mainstream media on us and no one wants to watch it. We actually went away to YouTube to get away from, went away from this mainstream media to get yes. what we need from each other. And now they're trying to drag this mainstream nonsense again into YouTube. So people will leave again. It, you know, it's not that it's a different medium. It's just our mindset has changed. We don't really want it, that anymore. It's totally true. It's funny though, you know, I've, I've treated it. It's actually really helped me out this whole, this whole demonetization episode because, um, you know, I have to admit I was actually getting lost in the matrix again. Like, <laughs> um, I, you know, my, I, I like I, I don't make videos frequently um, and like my first three videos I think were about three months apart from each other um, but they were the fastest three growing videos that I made um, yeah. and and then all of a sudden you know I, I, I start um, I'm able to make money from the channel and I pick up a sponsor and I like I like my sponsor I, I, I support the goods and all that but it's like my mindset just started changing and I was still trying to channel true information, but I think for me, I prefer to take my time with things. And so when I got demonetized, it was a little reminder of like, hey, you're getting lost to this game. You're getting lost to concepts of your brain, trying to go, you know, trying to put too much pressure on this YouTube thing. It was like, just have fun with it. So it's not, it's, it's done the exact opposite of discouraged me anyway. It's got me back to my roots and got me wanting to make the videos that I was originally making. Yeah, again, the same story with me. So when I, um, because I rely on my wonderful patrons, they, they support the whole thing through their yes. generosity. And when I was making those videos, I would, um, when I was, you know, when everything was very popular and I was getting hundreds of thousands of views, I was like, okay, I'll just make a video about that. And then I'll talk about this. I didn't really pay much attention to what was going on because pe people were donating anyway. And then at some point, uh, I realized that I'm getting lazy, well, not lazy, but just reckless with the way I talk about things. And Machine Elf told me off, actually, for that. They said mm -hmm. it, it's becoming it's becoming a, fin a, a source of financial gain instead of this being a genuine thing about caring people. And I somewhat ignored this. And then a few weeks later, I realized, oh, my, you know, my views are being cut in not even half. I think I was getting like... 20% 20, 20 of what I used to have viewership-wise. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. now I need to not only pay attention, but I also need to make sure that I give something really important. Like I give people what they want to have, what, what they came here for. So I started paying attention to what I talk about. I started changing my messages and I started making this actually worth their time. And it made me, I believe it made me a better... Um, well, not medium, I don't like to use the word medium, but that made me a better video producer. I started making these videos for mm. people, not only mm. informational, but also I tried to make sure that they um, they get motivated, they understand their lives better. And I believe this change, YouTube actually has helped me become a, a better person and a better whatever I am, um, you know, be a video producer or motivator. It helped me the same way as it helped you. So yes. thank you, YouTube. <laughs> you <have laughs> yeah. Good stuff with your censorship. That's actually good. Um, okay, listen, it was, a, it was a really nice podcast. I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, where, where can people find you? It's uh, TripWhip. 
So I'll, I'll, I'll put the link in the video description. Um, anywhere else, Instagram, Facebook, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I have Instagram. Um, it's trip whip, but with double P on the trip and the whip. Um, okay. And I think that's pretty much everything. Um, yeah. So I'll put the links in the video description. Whoever wants to go and subscribe to Jack's channel, please do that. There's a lot of interesting videos. Um, anyone who wants to find me, I'm 434. And obviously, you, you'll find me by typing in numbers 434 in YouTube. You, sh you should be able to get this. If not, put in 434 machine else, you, you should get to me. I'm, <laughs> I'm everywhere at the moment. And yeah, you, you'll find me on Instagram, Snapchat, Discord, everywhere. So yeah. Thanks a lot, Jack. Uh, I hope we'll do this again. I'll, I'm uh, talking to a lot of people because I'm building a network of, of people. I want all of us to connect. At some point, we'll start doing things together. Um, maybe I was thinking maybe we should we could start a separate platform just for spirituality. That would be a good idea. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's something I'm not good at yet technically, but we'll probably figure it out at some point. So I really I'm really happy that we have this chance to talk. So I want to wish you all the best for now. And thank you, my man. Yeah, talk to you soon. Oh, yeah, hopefully. Thank you again for having me on as well. My pleasure. Take care, buddy. Wonderful. See you, man.